All right, well, hello, Internet. Uh, this is going to be a short video on um, basically a review of a bunch of Z-Wave switches that I've bought over the years. Uh, at my last house, I was experimenting with a bunch of Z-Wave stuff with my Wink Hub and uh, was kind of undecided which uh, switches I wanted to get. So I bought one of each and put them all in my house and it uh, gave me uh, quite a few insights that I wanted to, to share with you guys so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. Um, the first candidate that I want to go over is actually the Lutron Cassetta. I really wanted things to work out with the Cassetta because I think the, the look of it is just really, um, really modern. It's got a lot of features in it where it's got the the LED feedback on um, you know what your brightness level is and uh, also it has the separate dimmer from uh, from the actual on off switches uh, but when I was actually using it uh, what I discovered is that uh, you really need uh, some tactile feedback for finding where it is you want to press. Uh, it never occurred to me until I got this that 50% of the time you need to operate a light switch, it's dark. Uh, that's a little reductionist, but uh, you know, a lot of times you either need to, at a glance, be able to tell what the state of the switch is or uh, be able to fumble through it or fumble for it in the dark. And this, uh, because it's flush, it, it, it's tough to even find where the switch panel is. Whereas with one of these, you know, you can immediately find it with your fingers. This, uh, it takes a, a, another few moments just to find where your fingers are over the actual switches. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, I found a lot of times I was hitting the dim up um, instead of the on button and uh, you know it just became more problematic than it was worth. I really wanted things to work out with this because um, it doesn't have a neutral, it's got a very shallow body which I'll talk about in a moment. It's got stranded wires built in um, to make it easy to put it in and out of the out of the box um, but like I said it's uh, that flush mount just it, it I just couldn't work with that um, so that coupled with the fact that uh, it's not Z-Wave uh, it it's compatible with my Wink Hub but I'm switching to a uh, uh, to a Smart Things and Smart Things doesn't speak the Lutron system so I'm out of luck on that uh, okay so now <clears throat> We basically got uh, eight switches here. Uh, on the end is the uh, the Home Seer WD200, which I'll get to last. Um, the linear uh, WD500, and we've got three by Leviton, and a couple by GE, and one by Zeus. Um, now another thing. Uh, that uh, I want to point out. Some of these are switches and some of them are dimmers. Now, I think I'm actually going to go all with dimmers throughout my house because the switches, uh, the switches, they just have relays in them. So you'll be able to hear a click when I activate this switch here. That there's there's the actual like clicking sound of the switch, but then you'll hear a relay happening in the back. Um, now the Levitons are pretty quick, but this GE, uh, you'll hear a definite click of the paddle and then you'll hear the click of the relay a moment later. That drives me insane. Uh, it, every time I would go and turn that light on when it was installed in my old house, uh, it just made me want to tear the thing out of the wall. And this other GE one is a little faster, but you can still hear that little time delay between the clicking of the, of the actual switch uh, to the firing of the relay inside. 
Now, these two Leviton switches are quick enough to be acceptable. So if I were gonna go with switches, I would go with like one of the Levitons, definitely not the GEs, which makes me a little surprised to read on forums. I'll, uh, I'll find like some people who are planning on going with the GEs uh, for their switches, but, uh, but not for me. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to, to get to is, um, Leviton kind of makes two different shapes of these paddles. One is your traditional sort of like, uh, you know, on-off uh, paddle in both directions, but they also have uh, this, what I call this sort of ski jump style, um, where that is always, um, basically you're always pressing the bottom and it just toggles it on and off. And I found I actually like these better, uh, and here's why. Uh, one is that when you're when it's in the dark and you're trying to fumble around, this is actually more pronounced off of the faceplate than these are, and it's also easier to quickly find the place you you have to press because it's the only thing that's sort of pronounced from the face. Um, now, the other thing is uh, every time you press this, something happens. Uh, when I first tried one of these on-off ones, or up-down ones, um, you, if it's already on and you press this, you don't get anything. You don't get any sound, you don't get any feedback, which, uh, you know, can make you think that like maybe the switch is busted or it's controlling something else that's in another room, who the heck knows. Um, so, uh, yeah, I didn't like the fact that if you if you press it after it's already on or press the, the off when it's already off, you, just, you, you get sort of like no kind of um, result happening, which is, you know, when you think about you know, where we're coming from with this, uh, you know, from this uh, paradigm of, of these analog switches, every time you press um, the switch to, and get it to move, there is a change that happens in your electrical system somewhere. Um, so you always get some sort of like electrical feedback, the light coming on, light coming off, uh, which you don't get here, there's sometimes like the switch just doesn't do anything. And that's what I like about these is every time you press it, you get an action. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, like I said, I kind of want to go all with dimmers. So I was hoping to find something that had this ski jump style, uh, but also had this little uh, dimmer on the side, um, and I thought that like nobody made those, and then uh, right before I started filming this video, found out that Leviton used to make these. Um, it's called the DZ1KD. Uh, it's basically the ski jump style, uh, but with the little dimmer, uh, this little dimmer rocker off to the side, and uh, yeah, I'm really. Really tempted to get one of those, but uh, I've already decided on um, on what I'm going to use throughout the house. Um, okay, what more can I say about this? Um, another thing that I you know, was kind of looking for is I like my dimmer controls separate from my on-off controls. So, like with this linear, which is what I have the light bulb connected to, um, you have to press and hold in order to get it to dim or brighten, press and hold, and then you just do a momentary to get it to turn all the way on or off. Um, dimmers like that have always kind of annoyed me. Even the analog ones that, you know, that aren't Z-Wave, um, that you would just kind of like wire up to just, you know, a, a non-smart house, um, haven't really liked that idea of press and hold to get um, to get your dim and brightness. Uh, so 
Um, so I was hoping to get this, you know, like the separate uh, dimmer control, um, you know, off of the paddle. But uh, this one and that other Leviton, which they no longer make, apparently, uh, were the only ones that, um, that did that. Uh, let's see, what else can I say? Um, so this Zeus one, oh, right. So all of these have different sort of parameters that you can program uh, through, um, through Z-Wave commands. And I'm hoping to post a little spreadsheet I made of the different things that you can program with them. Almost all of the dimmers let you change the dim, um, or the dim bright rate. Uh, but uh, like this linear sort of comes on fairly slow, but, uh, but you can change that. And the Zoos has this one programmable feature which I thought was really slick. You can change this so that um, it's not just tap up for on and tap down for off. You can make it so that any time you touch either of these, it toggles it. So it's just like this sort of ski jump Leviton style. Except you can click anywhere and you'll get that change, you'll get that toggle uh, in, your, um, in your light or whatever. Uh, so that was sort of a cute trick. Also, almost all of these paddles let you program them to invert the paddle in case you installed it upside down. You, um, you can just reverse it uh, either with Z-Wave commands or you can... Uh, uh, or you can probably do it through like, you know, some sort of uh, press and hold uh, commands, programming from the faceplate. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about here? Oh, if you're mixing, if your plan is to mix the dimmers and the switches, uh, if you're planning on not going all with dimmers or all with switches, um, I would try to make it so that the that they look different, that it's obvious which which ones can be dimmed and which ones can't. Um, because if you were just sort of mixing, let's say, this Zeus dimmer and this Leviton switch, then it's not really clear that this one allows dimming and this one doesn't. So you could do something where uh, your switches are the ski ramp style and your dimmers are the ones with the little seesaw paddle. Or you could do a switch like this uh, and then have the dimmer be, um, have a little extra, you know, rocker on the side. Um, because otherwise you, you stand the chance of somebody or even you uh, trying to like dim or brighten something with a press and hold and they're operating something that's only a switch and not a dimmer. Um, oh, uh, here's a little mystery. I was scratching my head for the longest time because um, Leviton sells a DZ-S15 and they also sell a DZ-15S. And I couldn't figure out what the difference was between them until I actually had them in my hand. And the only real difference is that one is this seesaw paddle and one is this sort of ski jump. Uh, okay, so another thing to keep in mind when you're uh, working on these things is that these, right, so this is like our typical like light switch that you already have in your house, your dumb light switch, and there is not much depth to that and there's not much uh, width to it, so there's a lot of space um, to kind of route your house wiring inside of that, uh, inside of that light box. Now, uh, with the Z-Wave, they have much larger bodies, and that can cause quite a bit of crowding of all the wires inside your, your light box or your switch box. And especially when you're starting to push these back to screw them in, um, that causes all of your cabling to just sort of smoosh toward the back. And if these switches are really deep, um, then that puts quite a strain on all of your wire nuts and possibly you know you'll get um, maybe your your copper or bare copper ground wire you know you know being uh, tweaked and like it might push against one of the actual contacts so 
if you look back here, you'll notice that all of these have like a different sort of depth to them. Um, you know, these white ones are fairly deep. It looks like these levitons are like a little more shallow. Um, this linear is fairly shallow. And the home seer is, uh, well, it's about as thick as any of them. Um, so another thing to keep in mind here is notice how some of these have stranded wires coming out of them. They're like built in. Um, this makes it easier to sort of push these into the box. Uh, after you've got it all wired up and it's time to screw them into the box, with these stranded wires, they're not putting as much force on all of your solid core wiring uh, that's already in the box. So it's, uh, I definitely have a preference for these kind of like uh, stranded wire ones, much easier to install. Uh, the only downside being that if you did have to like cut one of these wires to, um, you know, if the end got frayed or something and you decided to like cut it off and start over, um, it's very, it's probably very hard to replace these stranded wires. So you're, um, you're kind of dealing with an exhaustible resource here. Um, then, uh, that's kind of it. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you the one that won me over, and it's this Home Seer WD200. Um, when, you, when you look at their website, they show you all the stuff that you can do with these side lights. And um, you, first of all, you can change the color of them uh, so that they match like the colors of the lights of any other switches you might have. You can change them to purple or green or blue or white. Um, you can also program the slew rate uh, of how fast it dims and brightens. Uh, you can have different uh, slew rates for how fast it dims and brightens from the physical switch and also a different one for how it dims and brightens uh, over Z-Wave uh, connections. Um, but then uh, on their website, they'll show like all the different colors and then they'll show that it also has a status mode where you can turn all of these lights on or off. And the example they give, I think is actually like too confusing because they use all these different colors and one of them means the, the pool pump is on and another one means that uh, the front door is open and, the, um, and it just looks like kind of like, like this hot mess. Um, but then actually after I played around with it, um, I was able to tie it in with a door sensor I have. And this is really neat because uh, I'm planning on putting door sensors around all over my house. I'm going to make a video about that later. Um, and there are times when, like when I'm going to bed, I want to make sure that all of certain doors and windows are all closed. And I was able to tie this in so that when I pull this, when I open this door sensor, it the LEDs turn off from the dim level and now they go to this sort of status level or status display. And so I could have a different light for each one of my door sensors. And then I would be able to tell at a glance on the wall switch if the house was configured for, um, for nighttime, how I want it. So then as soon as I put this back, then it goes back to my normal dim level, right? So then, um, and you can do, uh, you can program this thing for, um, to do different things on double presses, quadruple presses, triple presses. Um, I've got it so that if I double press, it should go all the way to full bright. Uh, you can make it so that uh, the bottom uh, LED stays on even when it's even when the light it's controlling is completely off. So it behaves a little like these switches where when it's off it has this little locator LED. Or you can make it so that it's completely off. So yeah, that's kind of my review of all of these. And um, if the home seer cost a lot more than than all of these others, then I would have like kind of.
had second thoughts about it. But um, in reality, these things are only about like 50 bucks each. And if you buy them in quantity, you can get a little bit of a discount off that. And that doesn't make them much more expensive than some of these other ones. And uh, so for me, the winner was the Home Seer. And I hope this helped. Um, and I'll try and post my, uh, my little spreadsheet of all the features of these guys uh, in, the, uh, in the comments. Thanks.